Thank you very much. I want to, to thank the organizers and Professor Gasparini to inviting me to this conference that discusses one of, I would say, the most acute problems in this era. Um, the idea of creating a physical barrier between the Israeli and Palestinian populations was first proposed in 1992 by the then Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin following the murder of the Israeli teenage girl in Jerusalem and a series of terrorist attacks. Rabin said that Israel must take Gaza out of Tel Aviv in order to minimize friction between the peoples. In early 1995, a commission established by Yitzhak Rabin started, started discussing how to implement this project of barrier of separation between Israelis and Palestinians. Ehud Barak, who was Prime Minister in 2000, vowed to build this barrier stating that it is also essential to the Palestinians in order to foster their autonomy. Following a Palestinian violent outbreak in 2002, known as the Second Intifada or the El Aqsa Intifada, Israel finally began the construction of the barrier that was to separate most of the West Bank from Israel. The basic approach was endorsed by the Supreme Court, which made reference to the conditions that led to the building of the barrier, to the barrier. and in 2005, uh, it describes the history of violence against Israeli citizens since the outbreak of this intifada. The barrier runs in part or near the 1949 Jordanian-Israeli armistice line, Green Line. But they diverge at several places to include on the Israeli side several areas of Israeli settlements in the West Bank, such as East Jerusalem, Ariel, Gushemunim, Male Adumi, and others. Most of the barrier is set in the West Bank and diverges from the pre-1967 border from 200 meters to as much as 20 kilometers. Palestinian towns, it is to note, some Palestinian towns, it is to note, are nearly encircled by the barrier. In April 2006, the length of the barrier decided by the government was to be 700 kilometers. Approximately 60% of the barrier are now constructed. Uh, uh, 10% are under construction, and construction has not yet begun for 30% of the barrier. In the last years, the construction has practically stopped because of financial problems, lack of enthusiasm, and strong pressures from the outside. Tens of claims have been raised by Palestinian villagers to the Israeli Supreme Court which in many instances obliged the military to move the line of the barrier westward. Most of the barrier consists of a multi-layered concrete fence system of 50 meter width. The armies prefer this design as three fences with a pyramid-shaped stacks of barbed wire for the two outer fences and a lighter weight fence 
with detection equipment in the middle. Patrol roads run on both sides of the middle fence and an anti-vehicle ditch is digged on the eastward side. Some sections, less than 5% of the total length, are constructed as a wall made up of concrete slabs up to 8 meter height and 3 meter width. Due to topographic conditions, some sections reach up to 100 meter width. Wall construction is more common in urban settings, such as areas near Calcilia and Jerusalem, because it is narrower, requires less land, and provides more protect protection. There are also regular observation posts and automated sensing devices. devices. Gates at various points are controlled by soldiers. To give you an idea how it looks, this is in the urban area, and this is the fence in more rural area. The barrier obviously is a highly controversial subject. Supporters argue that the barrier is a necessary tool for protecting Israel civilians from Palestinian terrorism, including suicide bombing attacks that increased significantly during the Al-Aqsa Antifada. And in actual fact, the wall is now a major factor behind the significantly reduced number of incidents of suicide bombings from 2002 to 2005. Palestinian militants killed 23 Israelis and foreign visitors in 2006 down from a high of 289 in 2002. Successful suicide bombings in Israel nearly came to a halt. Opponents argue that the barrier is an illegal attempt to annex Palestinian land under the guise of security, that it violates international law and as the effect to preempt final status negotiations. The war also severely restricts Palestinians who live nearby in the ability to travel freely within the West Bank and get jobs in Israel. In 2004, the International Court of Justice declared the construction of the barrier contrary to international law. You see here demonstrations against the wall, and here you have on the other hand uh, people working their feet close to the wall. In February 2004, the Israeli government said it would review the route of the barrier in response to US and Palestinian concerns. Following also an order of the Supreme Court, 30 kilometers of the barrier were rerouted. Finally, the barrier is, was shortened to 680 kilometers. It was to have approximately 7% of the West Bank territories and 10,000 Palestinians on the Israeli side. This anomaly of leaving thousands of Palestinians on the Israeli sides in given areas was taken care of in a further step. Opponents argue, however, that the current drought still includes on the Israeli side 85.0% of the West Bank territories and about 27,000 Palestinians. And that another 
3.4% of the area is partially surrounded by the park barrier. These allegations are denied by the Israeli authorities, but the difficulty of the discussion resides in the fact that a part of the wall is not yet constructed and that the works themselves have largely stopped. The Israeli leadership's core argument is and remains that statistics clearly indicate the barrier as it is has already substantially reduced the number of infiltrations and suicide bombings and other attacks on Israeli civilians. The proof of this allegation is founded, they say, in is given by the Troyes themselves. In March 23, 2008, uh, in an interview, Palestinian Islamic Jihad leader Ramadan Abdallah Shalach confessed and complained to Al Shark that the separation barrier limits the ability of Al Aqsa Martyrs Brigade, Hamas, and the Palestinian Islamic Jihad to arrive deep within Israeli territory and to carry out suicide bombing attacks. It compels the Palestinian residents, residents to look for other ways to cope with the requirements of the arms travel. We have been forced, he said, to switch from martyrdom missions to rocket attacks. It does seem that the construction of the wall has improved the capability of Israeli arms to pursue Palestinian militants, to push Hamas to concentrate more on political activity, and to force Palestinian militant groups to look for new strategies. According to a report published by Jerusalem Israel Institute, the barrier has also unintended effects. Hence, no few Palestinians who were living in areas outside the barrier are now making move, uh, making efforts to move in traditionally Jewish neighborhoods of Jerusalem. In June 2004, the Washington Times reported that the reduced need for Israeli military incursions in various areas have prompted efforts to rebuild damaged streets and buildings and encourage a gradual return to a semblance of normality. The Jerusalem Post reports that for some Palestinians who are Israeli citizens and live in the Israeli Arab town of Um el Fahim, near Jenin, which is on the West Bank, the barrier between them has significantly improved their lives because it prevents would-be thieves or tourists from coming to the town. GDP growth in the West Bank has also increased modestly in 2003-2005 after a sharp decline